For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm giving you a bit of a review video on a brand new tent from Outwell. So with me here today, I've got the Outwell Vermont 7 Air. So the Vermont is a name we've known and loved for many, many, many years um, with Outwell. And basically for the new season, what they've actually done is almost kind of redeveloped it. And it's kind of a little bit of a different twist on probably the, the original that we've kind of known and loved. So what we have here is almost like a bit of a, a hybrid, really. So it's inflatable, but then there's also one kind of uh, additional steel pole to create this front open port section. So versatility is the key thing. That's probably is the one thing I would say about the Vermont. It's all about an easy pitch time, something you can take away for a, sort of a week or if need be a weekend. Um, but you've got flexibility in the layout uh, and the design of it. And you'll see that when we look inside in just one moment. So first and foremost, we'll talk about the fabric itself. So with the, it sits in kind of uh, Outwell's new premium collection. So it's top end features with their polyester material. So we're running with a uh, 800 square gram uh, material, runs about 150D and it's got a more importantly a rip stop running throughout it. So it's a really strong fabric. Um, and again, it's waterproof to 6,000 mm hydrogen head. So it's really great waterproof rating as well. But again, it's all about features and key things. That's one of the things we've kind of known and loved with Outwell over the years. So what we've got, it's like an embossed material as well, so it kind of gives a bit more of an extra, again, I suppose it just looks a bit neater and tidier, but the workmanship of how it's put together is, is crucial. So things like the guide points, for example, we've got, it, it sort of splits off into two sections, so it runs in the seam at two points, helps spread the load and gives you better longevity and less, you know, as we get a bit more wear and tear as it goes through. High visibility guidelines as well with runners as well, so alter it as we need to. Other things as well is, at the front and back, we've got storm straps. So again, it really helps to get better tension throughout it, get that roof looking really sharp. And with the webbing strap as well, it goes into the seam at the point here. And again, spreads the load. So from a longevity point of view, it's going to wear better. You, you probably get less issues going on. Webbing straps tend to be the better way. And because it's the front and back, it gives the main amount of torsion into the roof itself. There's also little features like tabs like this, which allow you to add an extra kind of uh, canopy tarp onto it. They do a sort of a canopy tarp, which is the large size, which is perfect for the Vermont. Uh, and it creates, like I said, just almost a roof section with a few extra poles um, to work well. We've got tinted windows throughout the whole model as well to get plenty of light in there, but an element of privacy as well. And there are zip curtains on the inside to um, get that privacy when you want it completely. Each beam is done individually, so there's four main beams um, to the awning itself. Located that here, there's an inflation point located down there. We've done a separate pitching and packing video you can check out as well if you want to see it itself pitching the flesh. Really looking it's about about a 15 minute pitch time, pegged out going out the works. Um, so you can check that out if need be. The valve actually they use is a nice big oversized dinghy valve. A manual hand pump can supply a standard with the actual tent itself uh, and just utilize that to get it directly in. But being a nice big dinghy valve, it means it's easy to get the air out as well, more importantly, so when you want to pack it away. We've got a steel pole which you would then basically zip into this front section. Now, as you see it here, is it actually is a free zone tent. So we've got sort of sleeping, living, and then an enclosed canopy. What I've been very clever in doing is actually the front door itself can be completely removed. So if you want a nice open canopy like we have here, you can quite happily do that. Failing that, when for the UK where especially, when you want to um, sort of enclose yourself up, you can add this additional zip door onto it. So I say this comes as standard with the tent itself. All we can do is pop on the zip runners. More importantly with the actual uh, point as well, you've got a window built into it, uh, but also there's a mesh part into it. So if you want that front, 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 front mesh door, that's where this comes into it. You can of course have it halfway if you want to. So again, it means you can have your entrance point here. Because you can, it's got four zip pullers, you can almost open it from right to left or left to right. So you kind of dictate how you want it to be. For me, we're gonna go the full way through. All but the door there. So again, you just peg that out. Now we've got, Mesh parts built into it here, so again, that's going to be your airflow. So you've got two either side on the lower point to get the maximum amount of air directly through. And then when you want actually the um, to get the visibility, 
for when there's rainy days. You've got curtains which to toggle in place and roll away. So that way you can get plenty of light directly in. And again, when it's, the rain's not so great, well, it's raining, for example, you can just zip that up and you still have the visibility up top, which I think is a really nice, clever way of doing it. That way it still feels light and fresh inside. But of course you can then just zip off the panel completely. Obviously zip it up halfway or as we had it previously. Remove, zip, detach it. What the other thing is quite nice as well is because it completely detaches, if you wanted to remove it to just to reduce the overall uh, weight in one section, that works really quite nicely as well. So just gonna fold that away, tuck it out of the way. You can still uh, roll it to the side if you really wanted to. But that works really nicely. Next thing, you've had this nice big open canopy bringing the outside directly in, hence the sort of furniture and things like that. And then if need be as well, this front part can roll back a little bit there. So you can have it just as a pole, as is one big open canopy, because now we're really trying to create a range which has the flexibility. So I said, they don't want to create uh, ones with open fronts, then ones with enclosures. It's easier to just give the people everything you want, so you have the option to do it. The door, which basically goes from what I'm gonna call the sort of the sheltered front area into the main living area as well, that opens up completely as well. This one doesn't detach, but what it does do is roll back fully. So and, you've, and then the jaw, the bottom of the door obviously drops down flat, so it does flow really nice and neatly into it. We can zip this again to the halfway point. For me, like I said, if you were gonna have the door in place, I would always probably open it from, as we're looking at it, from right to left, just because then it almost creates you a little bit of a dead space on this side and then creates you a, an entrance way directly in and out of the tent. So that would be kind of my main kind of footfall. Again, you can zip this completely shut. There are then, obviously you've got basically mesh built into this panel, so airflow, this is gonna be a bug-free barrier. So you zip it along, obviously the top, and then more importantly along the side. So with a light on at night, you haven't got to worry about the bugs, it's bugs and, and midges and stuff coming through. If you want to bring it around to the corner points, it sort of mimitates the door. You can feed it through like so, so you've still got a bit of privacy down low, and obviously the mesh built directly on top. If you really want to, the zip puller can go the other way. So you can create like a little veranda um, and again, you can do a similar sort of thing with the very front door as well. But because for me, because it zips along the top as well as more importantly in the bottom, it's really nice, kind of cleanly designed. And the other thing you've got in there is actually, um, fact, let me demonstrate that now, is the magnetic door. So you've got outwells to what they call quick and quiet door. So it's the ability of a, placing a doorway, which doesn't use zips, so you can kind of, kind of Come and go as you please, it zips behind you and keeps it shut. So it's a great way at night, not creating much of a disturbance. Or if, for example, uh, you've got bugs and that sort of stuff coming through, you can obviously zip it all in. When you want to slip out, just go in quite nice and neatly. It closes behind you and you're good to go. So again, I think they've certainly worked hard on trying to get that sort of working properly. For the time being, I'm just going to shut this down and in a way. But because again, that zips, directly up to the top, it's a real, create a nice seal. Um, and yeah, it makes it feel real for a nice part of the tent. In fact, let's bring the camera around actually and we'll kind of go into the actual tent a bit more. So as we kind of come around, you can probably appreciate the overall kind of size of the tent. Now it's got a bit of a different kind of layout in comparison to what we've seen in previous uh, Vermonts. Main reason we've kind of, the bedroom sonar is a little bit different. So what we've got is still the ability to sleep seven but we're going to go a three, a two, and a two. Rather than having everything just along the back, it kind of gives a different dynamic to it. For me, it's quite a nice option. What you can always do if you wanted to is just kind of drop one of the bedrooms down and actually unzips. So you almost have just a two bed at the back and a three. I personally see this more as a very comfy four. Right, your master bedroom, a nice big oversized double air bed goes in there. And then you've got two beds and two bed, uh, sorry, a bed in there and a bed in there. So four people. Really those bedrooms are about 120 width. Um, so you're gonna struggle to fit an air bed in there properly. That sort of like a roll mat and something like that you could do. Whereas with that, for example, again, you're not gonna fit three beds in there. So I think for me, it's a comfy, a very, very comfy four and you've got space 
more enough to boot to have sort of sleeping around here. We've currently got a setup actually with a projector screen and a projector, so you can also again do movie nights inside of here, which is really quite nice. Um, but it's still outside wise, you've got crystal clear windows either side with then zip curtains um, to get the privacy. And you can, with zips, you get the benefit of actually going halfway or as high or low as you wanted to go to as well. Um, one thing that makes this very different in the way it's designed to a lot of our brands actually as well is you've got this little sort of storage or side pod. So if, for example, you wanted to create um, a complete sealed section, so you wanted one big open section, obviously we've opened this door up, as you can see, we've put the front on. There is a ground sheet that comes supplied with the tent for that front section, and it kind of toggles up as well to create a real kind of seal. So it means our, our kind of sheltered or zipped in area in terms of water tightness would be right to the front. So you have all this space here, this then on the side pod here would be kind of your area you'd come in and out. Your little section just for shoes and then kind of it works really nicely and it's been extend out and down. So it's not like a separate side pod you put on, nor a little brow pole. It's designed, it's built into tent. And I'll bring the camera around later in the video just to kind of explain that a bit more in detail. We've got a mesh door built onto the side as well. So you get your bug barrier here. And of course, the one on the front that we've always looked at. Low level ventilation beneath the windows are out circular air, so it kind of keeps it a bit fresher and airy inside. Um, and the quick and quiet door feature, which you saw on the main front of the tent, well, the middle door anyway, is also on the master bedroom. So you can kind of come and go in and out of there as well. So that's really quite a nice little addition. So actually, to be fair, the bedroom at the back here, that's got it as well. So that's, again, something else I wouldn't expect. So you've got two bedrooms with that same feature, so that works really nicely. You've also got almost like a back corridor, so a little corridor that sits between the bedrooms, and you've got a full mesh down here. So for airflow directly through the tent on a warm day, this is going to feel really nice and cool. We've got a made carpet designed again for the Vermont, which you can look at as an optional extra. The main bedroom, as you can see here, has an opening on the front, but also the side, so you can pick and choose kind of what you use as your main entrance. Um, it all then means, personally, I think you could use the section, this middle kind of gangway as a sort of a storage section. The beams are designed in a way that it's kind of like a gothic arch, so it helps with internal headroom. Say so maybe about six foot two, in kind of, I feel quite spacious inside of here. The main body width is actually only about four meters, and then it extends about 70 centimeters with that section. So it's not, not saying an overly big tent, so it will still, it should still fit on a standard pitch because that kind of little section there is gonna be no further than the guy ropes that you would normally have on a, say, a four meter tent. But it's the features I do love about this. So for example, the door sections at the front here have a mesh built into them. So you also can have airflow. And because you've got two doors, you can, you can have, it feels kind of very much open plan. Um, you've got cable entry points going into the bedrooms. So we've got that situated just beneath the storage pockets we've got down the side here as well. Uh, we've got, it's just the way it's sort of set out. We've got lighting system, you've got Outwell's hook track system, so it's there. the beading which allows you to have um, a hanging point for things like lanterns, or you can run poles across to for storage, or like we have here with the lighting, we've kind of ganged it and just kind of created a real nice ambience. Um, or for the movie screen, for example, we've just utilised the, the hanging points for there. What you do also get is what they call the hook track systems. So it's like a little closed peg is the best way of describing it. It just clips onto this little point here and then creates a hanging point for lantern or you can use it for strip lighting. So when I sort of said about flexibility earlier, earlier on in the video, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you've got flexibility for doors, the bedrooms, you can obviously, if you wanted to, you can most, which I would arguably do anyways, if for example, you wanted more living space, this bedroom here, I would just take it out, put it almost in this gangway, if you're not gonna use that, take that bedroom down, zip it off, and then you almost got that same kind of, for the daytime, this all front section and then that section there as well. So I think that works really quite nicely. A lot to go through, I appreciate that. But in fact, let's get a bit more up close and personal some of these features I've been mentioning. So, firstly, we talk about the kind of the canopy depth. So as we can see, we've got a kind of like an open canopy. You can see from the side profile how kind of deep that generally is. I think that works really quite nicely. We've got also the tinted windows that work with it and then obviously the little side part which sort of steps out. And you can see how we inflate from one single point um, for each individual beam. So again, four points to inflate and then that brow part at the front. But even the side points here have got this really nice strong webbing strap system. This is great area for, like I said, taking our shoes off and kind of 
then stepping into the main part of the tent and we've got a mesh door to back us up and then as we're in the tent you can see how it's kind of laid out got a nice little wet dry area at the front there tinted windows on either side at well i've also made a really good job of actually in terms of the bracing you've got additional kind of webbing straps located around the top here that is basically designed that um it's helped to stop the sleeve from moving in the tube basically gives it stops any twisting or torsioning when it's packed down or when it's actually physically up so it makes the tent a bit stronger and that's that hook track system so it's like a beading we can see it here and again here basically you then you would clip items onto to hang um, for lanterns and that sort of stuff as well so that is pretty much on every single beam um, so that works really well and again like i said we've got the front canopy in the depth you can see where the sofa so this is for me is be a wet dry area especially when you say if you're you have the divisional door that's located there this whole side over here would be that wet area this would then be your corridor you then come into the overall tent see the windows in the bottom so we've got low level ventilation points down there that is the uh, obviously the part which will zip up so it gives you ultimate privacy and then we've got the bedrooms so we've got sort of two berths here and a two berth at the back We've just put like a, an extra large single bed in it just to sort of flaunt off how it is and you've even got a little doorway on the front section so if you didn't have that bedroom which we zipped off it still would allow you to have access from the living area into that section as well and like i said then you've got even on the uh, point down here storage pockets built into it uh sort of not only outside but also inside as a back well, you can probably see it <laughs> But there's a, there's a um, storage pocket built onto that as well. Um, and you've got, like I said, that quick and quiet door on that back section, but also the mesh point as well. You can probably see the door just about. Again, it's nice and dark. It's located here. So you can come into the bedroom from this section. When you sort of sat back in here and you sort of see how it's laid out, it's really quite nice. There is a, uh, an extra skirt kind of located up here, and so that's going to allow you to basically see out of the ventilation at the back if you really wanted to failing that you're going to kind of utilize it as we have here and we've even used like a little hanging basket which i think is quite a nice little option but i think way they've got we've kind of in the showroom here over in denmark if it looks quite smart a little storage pockets located down there and obviously cable entry points you have got uh, cable entry points into the main part of the tent Pretty much they come in from the side section over here. So there's a little level point just down the bottom. So you run your mains cables directly in. You can then also use it for things like lighting, hook track it, fully under the top, have some like a hanging lantern, or as we have here, we've kind of got a little projector set up. One thing I've, I've neglected to mention is um, Outwell also do what they call their uh, night light system. So it's a, the, the hook track basically doubles up as an optional um, lighting system. You buy these additional points here, which kind of comes on. And what you can then do is actually feed it onto that hook track. So basically it goes onto the base of that. And then what you can then do is light up the beading. So there's a few points in this little pocket to store that as well. Uh, it's designed that you can get it with a remote control so you can then obviously turn it on to illuminate something so you can see where the zips are it's definitely more like an ambience light so one at the front and then obviously one at the back here so then that light there would go for me it's a little bit of a kind of a quirky-ish kind of setup it's not something you would use by a reading light it's more to give you a very faint light so it's a shame that it's not brighter in a way it could be just the sole source of the lighting system for the tent but uh and that's not the case and i think the position of this actually is probably not the best place because it's designed that you can turn it on see where the zip is and get into your tent but it's behind the door so unless you've got the tent fully open like we have here it's a bit of a redundant point as well but um let me grab one thing i was looking for the remote control but i couldn't find it so um but yeah you have the ability like i said to turn it on and off by that point so it is a little shame that it's not more of a powerful light so you're still going to utilize the hook track anyway um to actually yeah, utilize it for a hanging lantern or First thing I would probably do is buy an additional flexible light that you could then put around the beam the whole way and then utilize that. I think that's just a bit more thorough and actually the light it gives you, it's a way of giving you actual light without having to have like a hanging lantern in a tent that 
no doubt I would most likely hit my head on. Um, but uh, yeah, I think on the whole, I think the whole is a really nice tent. It's it's got a lot of talking points. It's got the in terms of like being a fitch, feature rich uh, tent. There's a lot to talk about. The fabric for one, the individual features, the storage pockets in the bedrooms, the cable entries, the quick and quiet doors on the two bedrooms and the front door, the ability to open the front up, the zips along the bottom to make it enclosed. There's, there's a lot going on here. And I think not only that in terms of the way it's built, the two year warranty you get of it from a pack size, it's not the smallest thing, but weighs about 38 kilograms, which I think for a very premium tent, I think is actually quite decent. You know, it, it's it's probably a lot lighter than a lot of the other tents on the market that's a similar sort of spec level. So that's where I think it makes it a lot more manageable. And I would like to say you could remove the front panel, the pump, the pegs, and store that separately. So you might save a few kilograms in the bulk weight of it if that's one of the concerns of it. But um, yeah, I think on the whole, I, I really quite like it. It's certainly one we have on display our indoor showroom. So if more questions, queries, or concerns, you can always come in and see it, touch it, feel it get an idea for the sizing it as well, I think. And it, with the bedroom setup, it's a little bit different. Something that we've not really seen on the market elsewhere. Yes, you have kind of the, the bedroom, unfortunately can't go from here into this middle section. It's not the way it's designed, but you've still got the flexibility that also you can also do the data and remove it and put it in that way to maximize your space. So yeah, I don't know, it's nice. It just feels great. It feels very well thought, well thought out. The quality seems great. The material, it, it's just got a lot of tick boxes for me. So on the whole, I'm quite generally impressed. I think for what you pay, what you get works well, really. So um, of course, if you have more questions, queries, or want to know more about the product, be it the specification, the floor diagrams, the uh, individual features all listed for you, we can check the link below this video. It'll take you straight through to our website where we've got information about all of that as well as our pitching video all in one place as well and uh, latest pricing offers and bundle deals that we do with the tent as well so but we'd love to hear feedback from you guys as well so feel free to let us know what you think be it good bad or ugly but that on the whole is our video review on the exciting new atwell vermont air 7 um so yeah hopefully we'll see you again soon in our next atwells outdoors video review